Uh, good afternoon, all you lovely, passionate, and dedicated teachers out there uh, who have made up the time to come here and join us. Well, um, I was very excited recently when I got a chance to go back and join school. But unfortunately, the moment I entered the school, I realized every moment it reminded me of the new SOPs, the rules, the regulations. And I realized that it's kind of washing away the excitement. And not only it was challenging for me, but it was challenging for the students as well. And I'm sure many of you must have felt the same while returning to school after the MCO. Um, the first week, the teachers in the classroom were under tremendous pressure to maintain the safe distancing and the children are under the pressure to um, keep up with the SOPs. Very soon I realized that our 21st century learning strategies are taking a step back and there are no longer any group work or collaborations happening in the classroom. Um, all this kind of inspired me to think, can we do something differently which can bring more positivity into the classroom, more energy, more warmth, just like we were when the things were normal. I mean, back to the time before the MCO. The most important thing to keep the rules in place, me and my class adopted a song, which is on a peppy tune of, which goes like, you know, wear your mask on, check the space, kids, how you doing? Feel, kids, are you feeling, feeling good and fresh? And every time they sing the song, effortlessly they will put their mask on, they will maintain their distance and they will be energetic and ready for learning. Not only this, we also use the millennial style of using acronyms. As you all know how the millennials love to use acronyms. So the very boring word of social distancing was kind of transformed to SD. So every time the, anybody will cross the margin, the others will shout SD, 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 and the student will immediately go back to their places and they take it as a game. So there's no form of resentment of following the rules. Well, keeping the rules in place and knowing that there are so many restrictions where the children are not allowed to go to the playground during lunch and break times or during their free periods to break out this boredom I started to use a lot of games during, which can be done in the classroom while maintaining the social distancing. Games like dumb charades, uh, traffic light, hangman, bingo, and also inventing their own board games. My very energetic ones love to play the traffic light because this gives them a chance to run around the classroom, but to main, while maintaining the social distancing while there are certain kids who are coming up with new game ideas. And trust me, some really interesting games are coming up soon. Um, apart from the games and the rules, I was not ready to compromise on the fun learning activities. I remember before the MCO, we were doing so much of project-based learning, group learnings, while so suddenly we are back to a classroom where every tables are separated from each other. They are are marked, taped, as if, you know, there's no chance to have anything fun now. To break this, I started to use a lot of um, mirror word activities from whole brain teaching. Now this activity, I mean, I did not use it before, but recently I realized that it gives a chance to the shy kids or a little timid ones to speak out more confidently. They copy the action of the teacher and they get a chance to express themselves. And gradually I'm noticing by week four now that some of them have really turned out more confident. Not only this, I'm encouraging them to get into more imaginary experiential learning activities, more of individual role plays and a lot of dance and music. Well, thanks to YouTube that today we have a dance and song for every topic we want to teach. So this is kind of avoiding the student from sitting in one place and just completing worksheets. Well, so all you lovely people out there, uh, from my experiment and my experience, I'm forced to think differently. And I would request you all to let's change the paradigm of thinking about social distancing into stay social, but physically distant. And with this, let's have a lot of fun, play, grow, and learn together in the classroom. So stay well, stay healthy. You know and what? 
listen to that. That was absolutely bang on five minutes. Thank you very much, Ishiba. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Um, Thank has you. anyone got any questions uh, before um, we get started? And at the moment, I am checking the chat box. There is no questions. So uh, please, everyone, a reminder to you all, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, or even if you want to share your own reflection on uh, the topics that are being discussed here, please make sure that you just type your questions in and your reflections here, and we will read it out to you. Perfect. I, I've got a question. I really like the idea about physical distancing not social distancing i think right. that's really powerful tell right. me about mirror with words mirror with words how does that work mirror words yeah so mirror words is like if i am it works like you know the students are instructed to copy the completely copy the teacher along with her actions and the words for example if i am teaching perimeter in the classroom and I want to tell them that perimeter is the length across all the sides of a shape. So when I say mirror words, my children will copy my action along with my words. This makes them very actively engaged in what the teacher is teaching. Usually we see the students are listening, they are sitting quietly because they are forced to sit quietly, but mentally they get lost somewhere and they are not attentive. And after even after five times you realize they are in the same place. So when they are actually copying your actions and your words, they are very engaged in the learning. At the same point of time, they pick up the words, they pronounce it more confidently and it really creates a lot of difference. Excellent, excellent. And I, and I guess you could use that for maths, you could use that for- Any English, subject, any, any topic, subject. right. And you have wonderful videos in whole brain teaching, right, well, mirror words. Okay. All right. I, th I guess uh, everyone needs to do a bit of a Google and find out that one and the way of keeping active while we're going. Um, Anne, was there anything else that you wanted to? Um, no, there wasn't any questions here, but uh, just to ask the question of, uh, you know, I'm sure the these activities are really fun for the, the students, but how does it work for yourself, you know, preparation and things like that? Is there some tips that you could uh, share with us? Right. So the preparation is actually not difficult. I understand we teachers need to prepare for every topic, so many things to prepare. It's not easy to prepare for games separately. So what we can do is in our classroom, we have students from different ability. Uh, you can be the responsibility to the higher ability kids who can manage a, a hangman game, who can manage a dumb charade, who can encourage uh, different groups while they are sitting in smaller groups. If you have three uh, higher ability child in your class and you engage them to conduct while you can use your free time or break time or lunch time. So that works. I mean, what I'm trying to do is I am not getting into, you know, playing those games with them, but kind of teaching them to manage each other so once you teach once maybe for two weeks it will be a bit challenging for you but once they get it things will be very easier because we don't know how long this is going to stay like the same this yeah. is true this is true and we're, we're going to run out of time so i'm going to skip on but i think that 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 theme of letting the children do it themselves um, was really strong from our last teach meet that student ownership in home learning right. so it's great to see that it's carrying on even though we're back in the classroom